Good evening. Thank you for joining us tonight. Hello, and thank you for watching. For the past few weeks, Central Square has played host to public property as that we have a tragedy of the commons issue. Saying happy holidays, team. Voluntary interactions where individuals are free to act so long as they don't initiate force. This morning, we gather to remember Sergeant Tom Ball. Thank you for joining us tonight on Free Keen TV. I'm Johnny Ray. And I'm Allie Havens. In local news today, we start out with news about the parking meters. In a letter to the Finance Organization and Personnel Committee, Keene Police Chief Kenneth Miola states that the kiosk parking meters will be removed early and the coin-operated parking meters will be reinstalled. The coin-op meters have already been installed as of this broadcast. The letter states that, quote, Downtown merchants have reported constant complaints about the new kiosks and have reported downturns in business as a result, unquote. The new kiosks were set for a 90-day trial period, which will not be completed. And now Allie Havens has a special Valentine's Day segment. Valentine's Day is tomorrow, and as those words left my mouth, I'm sure many forgetful partners out there now feel very anxious to get in their vehicles and make a trip to the flower or candy store. But wait, before you go compulsively spending your hard-earned money on the commercial businesses trying to market their greeting cards, chocolates, and teddy bears, keep in mind that there's still a recession going on. And most of those romantic gifts we often associate with these holidays aren't exactly practical. But there's an, one exception, precious metals. That's right, while other gifts will be consumed or otherwise needlessly take up valuable storage space, Precious metals retain their value, despite inflation, as the graph here shows. It's important to remember that whether you're gifting a gold coin or a pair of 92.5% sterling silver earrings, you're making an investment, offering the potential returns to the receiver. Metals are known to retain their value and are actually more stable than government-backed fiat dollars, otherwise known as Federal Reserve notes. It's one of the most caring gifts you could give. Thank you for that, Allie. Free Keen TV producer James Schlesinger attended the Bearcat public hearing this past week and put together this compilation of the feedback given to the FOP committee. I'm Jim Smart and I'm from Keen, New Hampshire. And, uh, I'm opposed to the city getting the new Bearcat. I agree with the counselor who said it's a sign of militarization. This evening. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I wanted to come up before my, my two captains, uh, Captain Costa and Captain Russo, just to kind of preface, preface uh, what this vehicle is about. Start with comments from the city staff. Uh, Chief Kenneth Miller, King Police Department. We're speaking about the uh, Lanco Bearcat here. Uh, there are six of, six others of these available in the state. While this grant was awarded to the King Police Department, it's really to be utilized by the western part of the state. When we talk about the Bearcat vehicle, you know, I have to really point out it's really just a truck. It's a Ford F550 pickup truck. It's an armored vehicle. I have to point out it's armored. It's not armed you're still going to get the same professional service that we've gotten in this community to the level that we've gotten it from the men and women of the Keene Police Department. Thank you. My name is Gary Lemmerl. I'm the uh, City of Keene Fire Chief and also the Emergency Management Director for the City of Keene. As an Emergency Management Director, that is one of my main responsibilities is to make sure that what is expected by this community is that if we plan for something or we identify that we have a deficiency, we plan for those types of uh, resources and try to uh, especially get it on grants so that we can safely mitigate an incident in the city of Keene or the surrounding uh, area. It is equipped with thermal imaging camera, uh, but when we operate inside of a building, you're able to identify objects to be able to see um, where somebody may be injured or, or may be hurt. Some of the other things that are on this truck is uh, radiation identification or detection. You could also use it for any type of search and rescue. I hope you don't mind, but I've asked a few friends over. They're here to give you input to ask questions about accepting a grant for the Lenko Bearcat vehicle. But what I'm here to ask you is to recommend that the full council rescind this December 15th vote to accept the grant. As I said in my dissenting remarks in December, 
I think somebody needs to stand up against the culture of war and national paranoia that's infected communities across America in the post 9-11 era. It's going to take leadership, the kind of leadership Keene has demonstrated over and over again. Keene has an initiative to become the healthiest city in America by the year 2020. Do we mean just physical health or do we also mean emotional and mental health? Because if we continue to share in this mass hysteria and psychological sickness called the culture of war, we'll never reach that goal. As one who spends Saturdays for the last 11 years protesting our wars in Central Square, I fear this vehicle. I fear personally there was a letter writer in the Sentinel who wrote about something called prior restraint on free speech, I believe. The accusation of such a device sends a message, sends a message to the governed, from the government. My name is Edward Gross. I reside in Keene, New Hampshire. I'm in favor of this vehicle for the Keene Police Department. I've spent 27 of my 30 years in the Keene Police Department. The reason Keene is as good as it is, is because of many of the professionals sitting in this room. Uh, they go out and they fight what you fear. We can argue the cost of the vehicle. I'd argue it with you. I pay taxes in Keene, I'm happy to do that. If you want to consider costs, consider a seriously injured officer or the death of an officer. I'm James Plout. I've lived in this town for over 50 years. My biggest fear is that when there are uh, protests this summer to occupy Keene and to try to get some of our rights back, that the first thing this thing's going to be used on is the protesters. That's it. My name is Ted Peaks. I was born here in 1943. I have the confidence in our fire department and police department to give one of the best evaluations they could get to the rest of the country. And I, I'm in favor of it. Uh, hello, my name is Roberta Master Giovanni. I have owned and operated the Corner News in downtown Keene for the past 10. Working at Corner News often, often involves a lot of conversations. I had many conversations as to what people's thoughts were on the Bearcat. I spoke to hundreds of people. Everyone I spoke to seemed to agree that Keene really just does not need a vehicle of this caliber. Many felt that rather than militarizing our police department, we should try promo to promote more human interaction <coughs> with our officers. Most people felt as though the purchase of the Bearcat is a horrible waste of taxpayer dollars and it promotes violence. Uh, my name is Frank Moriarty. I've lived in Keene for 12 years. I'm a retired history professor and I uh, taught pretty close to in three universities for about 40 years. I just want to say that I feel the only thing we learn from history is that we don't learn from history. And now I'm thinking if Edward Everett Hale was to come back to this lovely, civilized, unafraid city, on his way in, the way from Marlboro, he might see a prison on the hill. And then if he looked up the statistics, he might find out that there are 60 million people involved in the prison industry in this country. I'm including prisons, I'm including probate, and I'm including uh, uh, parole. That's 60 million people, more than was killed by Stalin in the gulags, and more than by Mao Zedong in the uh, famine in China. Yeah, I'm Craig Rice, uh, City King. In the scheme of things, I don't think we want to be involved with the federal government accepting these gifts. The Native Americans, uh, they first accepted a box of jewels from Manhattan. Next thing you know, there's forts popping up all over the place. I say beware the military-industrial complex. Uh, my name is Jack Zeller. I'll be up front and say that I had retired some 18 months ago from the Keene Police Department, and uh, I am in favor of the Lenko Bearcat. First thing is that the, the Lenko Bearcat is not a military vehicle. It wouldn't survive a military operation for 10 minutes. If you do expect your officers to respond to lunatics in box stores, then you need to equip them properly for the job. My name is Dave Breger. And so, so here's really my statement here, and uh, in a nutshell, in a time where the federal government is in immense debt and it is spending more money than it even collects in taxes, and they come and they offer us a vehicle that costs $300,000 and offer to put them in various cities across this, the country 
Furthermore, the vehicle is being described as a rescue vehicle. It's slow. It doesn't go more than highway speed. It's heavy. My former experience as a special forces operator before I came out, I'm familiar with these vehicles. They're very heavy, they're very slow, they're very difficult to get in and out of. And so, it has gun ports on the sides. We're talking about six holes on the sides of the vehicle so that an assault rifle can be aimed out the side of the vehicle. This to me seems like, pardon me, this, this to me seems like an unnecessary spending of money across the country. I'm Susan Small. I feel this vehicle is not necessary, but with that, for a lot of the reasons that have already been stated, but with that being said, I fully support um, Chief Miola and his police officers in the um, emergency management department. Gloria Ruff, I trust the chief when he says that's the only reason we should accept this bear cap. But for at least some scenarios described, I don't think it would be that helpful. A hostage taker's first demand would be the withdrawal of the vehicle under threat of with killing the hostages. I trust the police department and their training to be able to hand, handle what troubles come now. By their own admission, they would not seek to buy this. And the video link has suppressed from the public, but markets to police departments, I saw a very aggressive machine. The other videos we were, the public was allowed to see were basically commercials showing its more benign uses. I don't trust the to Trojan horse that is the Homeland Security Department. This bear cat has come to resent, represent to many of us everything that is ugly in society. Kelly Voluntaries. Another example of the effects of a growing police state on a community was the murder of two-time veteran and father, Jose Juarena, by the SWAT team in Tucson, Arizona. On the morning of May 5th, 2011, Juarena's wife, Vanessa, saw men dressed in all black standing outside her home with automatic weapons. She screamed for her husband, who subsequently woke up and grabbed his gun, telling his wife to take their four-year-old son and hide in the closet. Unfortunately, the armed gang of thugs surrounding the Juarena's home shot at him 71 times and left him there for dead. After surviving Iraq and Afghanistan, Jose Juarena bled to death on the floor of his own home at the, hands, at the hands of his own government as his wife and son watched in horror. The safety on his weapon had never even been deactivated. Jeffrey Scott. So I now bring, come to 2012 and I think about Iraq and Afghanistan combat veterans coming back and experiencing a lot of the stuff and it's fresh, it's raw and they are hurting and they're having a tough time adapting and they're coming back to an environment that has a lot of bat, 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 a lot of that and possibly a bear cat. And people are going to flash back to something and suffer some unattended consequences. Suicides are up and you read every other day about another situation where another veteran has gone over the edge and committed some kind of atrocity. So I'd like you to consider voting on this or re-voting on this and possibly saying no to this and leading our country and saying no, we don't need it. Frank Murphy, and when I saw this vehicle, one of the things it was supposed to be doing is uh, crowd control. And that hasn't been mentioned tonight. Uh, I'd love to know just exactly how it would be used in controlling a crowd. Are they going to bring out uh, SWAT team members into the middle of, say, the after, the after period of the pumpkin festival? I wonder if you can limit the usage or control the usage of the vehicle so that the friendly face of the uh, King Police Force does not become the confronted face of the King Police Force. I think it'll help them, it'll help the community, and uh, in general, I think it's at least the minimum we can do for everybody. My name is Pete Ayer. I would just say, to echo some other folks that have already spoken, like what is the rationale given for the acquisition of this vehicle? It's purported it's safety, and that's what I hear touted, but in the 11-page grant request, you know, the word terrorism was mentioned time and again, yet I didn't hear the King Police employee mention that once tonight. That was the first, second, and third reasons maybe listed in the Great request given. I mean, this is a police state vehicle. That's all this is. I'll do what I can to keep it safe. You have my word. If I see someone getting hurt, I'll come near aid. We don't need a bearcat to do that. Hi, uh, Ian Freeman. I like the idea of a peace officer, an officer whose job it is to restore peace. And if that's all that Keene Police were doing out there, then I wouldn't be so opposed to this. But I know from having talking, uh, talked to a former police officer who unfortunately couldn't make it tonight, 
of uh, 10 years in this state. I asked him when I was in Manchester and we saw this thing sitting in behind the Manchester Police Department. I said, how often is this used in a violent situation? He says less than one in five times. That's because they're using these devices to roll up on people's houses, to bust in the, the front doors, to arrest them for having a joint, or arrest them for having you know an ounce of pot. By the way, how many people are here to oppose the, uh, the beer cat tonight? I'm Stephen Zaman. I've heard that not all members of the city council have uh, viewed the video and have refused to watch the video. I want to know how you guys can make an informed decision without all the facts and uh, watch it without watching the commercial for the vehicle uh, that's in question. I don't know why you guys have your heads in the sand on making this decision. Damo Freeman. The government, from the feds to this council to the Keene police, have already decided this Bearcat's coming to town. Maybe. Big maybe, the outcry will change the council's mind. But if they don't, again, consider withdrawing your support from them. Stop paying for their services through taxation. David Crawford, I'd also like to um, mention about the um, poll that I set on each of y'all's desks. That was a poll that was with the, um, the Sentinel did, and uh, it, it showed 72% uh, opposing. So my question to you, Mr. Greenwald, is with all this op opposition to the, to the Bearcat, and basically it just seems Keen is against the Bearcat, why are you for the Bearcat in, op in, in opposing the city of Keene, basically? All right, hi there. My name is James Carroll. Over the course of three years, I have been in uh, went to Keene State and have had numerous interactions with KPD. Not because I'm a criminal or anything, I don't have any record, I've never been incarcerated, but because they're an extremely aggressive police department who preys on the college students. Now, it's funny, there's a lot of uh, people who might not attend the college here, so don't understand this aspect, but you should see some of their attitudes when they come out, how the way they treat us, they, uh, they're all about the tickets, because they know that's quick income. So, that's an, an input I'd like to make sure that everyone knows who might not be aware of how they act towards college students. Their attitudes are awful, they have awful attitudes about how they approach us, they're aggressive, they don't follow so on the Bearcat issue, I have little respect for the police department to begin with because of their aggressive nature, and I don't think they, they've done anything really productive except write tickets. No. My name is Ken Weta. What are going to be the social costs of militarizing local um, law enforcement with this thing? I have big concerns about that. I have concerns about creating a climate of fear. You know, if the National Guard had this vehicle, if local guards had it, I would, I would be a lot concerned about it, but I don't think that... I don't think the function of a, of a local police should be a, a military or paramilitary like this. Jamie Kapach, with all due respect, Chief, the Bearcat is not just another truck. It's not just a truck. There's a lot of weight that comes with it, not physically, but psychologically for the people in front of it as well as the people inside it. Um, I read an article in the Sentinel where the Keene Police Department was talking about how it was needed in case we had an event such as Hurricane Irene or a radiological <laughs> event. Um, and in the same article, you had Manchester police officers talking about their Bearcat and how they use it on a weekly basis. And I hope, I hope they're not having hurricanes and radiological disasters on a weekly basis. And in fact, in the same article, they talked about how they used it recently to intimidate a robbery suspect. And that doesn't sound like an emergency situation. That sounds like regular duty of a police officer. My name is Matthew Walt. To me, this is a question of, of use of resources our tax dollars, and being on, spent on equipment that's not needed on a daily basis. And uh, there's many things I think both the police department and the fire department and our community could use that would be used on a daily basis. And I think that's where I'd like our government to spend that tax dollars. <coughs> so I'm asking the city council to use its voice and to send the Bearcat back. My name is Jamie Contois. One of my heightened concerns about the Bearcat in our community is by watching national news about how frustrated citizens, who many of which are organizing themselves in peaceful gatherings around the country out of frustration about the eroding economic situation in the United States of America, have tried to start creating <coughs> spaces in the United States where they can call public attention to the concerns they have um, through the Occupy movement, but there's also other examples. And I think the eroding trust that exists in myself with police forces 
um, in general in the United States is the many stories that we are seeing across the country of where excessive force is being used against grandmothers, against college students that are seated and sitting peacefully, and that I am very concerned that um, these kinds of um, these stories that we see as a part of our national narrative will continue to erode the trust between the public and the police force as we look for creative solutions to address some of the really eroding public policies that are impacting working class everyday people. I'm Jean-Marie Ludlow. So for me, it's like I understand what, you know, and I do respect police officers. We're very lucky and fortunate that we, we, we sense a sense of safety, I suppose. But I guess it's a shame that I feel like we've come to this where we have to have a bulletproof you know, vehicle. You know, my stand in life after experiencing what I have is not to say that I'm right, but my experience says I'm committed to peace. That's what my commitment is. I'm committed to education. And my committed assessment is that that's what we should be standing for, is education. Education, education. Campaigning for things like lives, not knives. Spending money on campaigns for a better society. Not vehicles that encourage and you know, promote a, a sense of fear. I lived in fear. I lived where the military were everywhere. And for having a vehicle, that's what it's demonstrating is something like fear. I have uh, 300 more or 300 plus more petitions, uh, signatures right here that I'd like to submit. When I found out about this issue, uh, this issue was not just because Terry Clark is my father. <clears throat> it was about the militarization of Keene, New Hampshire. And uh, I understand it's just the truck, but I mean, we cannot lie to ourselves and say it's just the truck. It is a militarized vehicle. Um, I wanted to uh, make a, a note that uh, the highest crime rates in Keene are larceny and assault. So we have a lot of kids stealing out of cars and apartments. We have a, a lot of drunk college kids beating the heck out of each other. Um, I don't see how a Bearcat is going to prevent those. Like, how are we going to prevent the highest crime rate in Keene, which is those, with a Bearcat? Yeah, I'm Chris Hansen. Uh, in general, my response to hearing about this Bearcat coming to Keene uh, was like Terry Clark's, that, oh my God, why are we doing this? And part of the context in which I had that that response was seeing uh, televised uh, images of peaceful protesters being attacked by militarized police operations in other parts of the country. And being one of the people who often is, is on Central Square with nothing to defend myself but a cardboard sign of advocating peace and an end to war, I felt threatened to hear that the Keene Police Department was going to acquire such an intimidating piece of equipment. Michael St. Pierre. I don't, I don't know how to feel about this. I'm really kind of baffled and upset that we're pursuing grants for vehicles when there are homeless, there are people elderly who need care, there are need, we need cleaner, renewable sources of energy. I mean, we're in an energy crisis here. Why, why are we, you know, amping up the police? Why aren't we helping people who are less fortunate, you know? It, it just really has me upset and bothered why um, it, it, that you guys already have kind of, I'm getting the sense that you've already made your decision. So I'm here to put my two cents in and say, I, I'm not okay with this. There needs to come a point where we need to put our foot down and say no. My name is Sarah Heineke. We're speaking of money. Um, my house is on a tight budget right now. I think there are a lot of people in here who are in the same situation. And I think if $250,000 needs to be taken from folks, I don't, I don't really want my money going to this. Um, I've, I've lived in Keene, I've stayed in Keene because it's a great city. Um, I do also want to echo my, my Grove Street neighbor in that Keene PD, I haven't always had a non-aggressive kind of uh, experience with them. To be pulled over as a single woman alone in my car by two cruisers and approached by three armed officers for a broken plate light is a little little ridiculous to me in the broad daylight. It's a, it's very intimidating. Hi, um, my name is Sky Stevenson. I want to say I have a um, PhD in international relations, and have lived like the woman who spoke earlier, um, two times in countries under military dictatorships. I was outside of the United States in September 11, and the country that I returned to, I lived 10 years overseas in Chile. The country. I, 
left was a different country than I came back to. And um, I feel sometimes like a foreigner here because it's become so much more focused on fear and terrorism when actually this is still a relatively safe country. Um, yes, Ms. Okay, I'm Bradford Hutchinson of Keene. <clears throat> And I am 100% in favor of the Lenko Bearcat. Lenko Bearcat. I'm looking forward to getting our Lenko Bearcat. You wanted some new information. The Keene City Council, in their usual modus operandi, they thought that they would sleaze this thing through over the Christmas vacation and nobody would really notice. The reality of the world is it's a dangerous world. I would rather have this vehicle and not need it than need it and not have it. It's not a tank. It's not a military vehicle. I don't think the sky is falling. I don't think this is over-militarized. I think we got a bunch of chicken littles that are freaking out over this keen police getting a truck. I don't want to be afraid of the cops in the town I was born in. I don't want to be afraid of the military. I'd rather look at the rabble that this vehicle's, look at the rabble, this vehicle, you know. So I'm looking forward to the Lenko Bearcat and Mr. Lenko guy. I, I hope I get my T-shirt. I really, I really, I really think that this is a gross overreaction. If a Bearcat comes to Keene, it's more likely to get used, and it's just going to continue the usurpation of people's rights. All right. <clears throat> Pardon me. Well, it looks like um, most of the attendees at the meeting were anti-Bearcat. And um, what, I, what, I, what I wanted to say about it tonight was that uh, after I watched the Lenko commercial, what I thought of was the Austrian, <laughs> school, was the Austrian school of economics because mm -hmm. I loved the video. I liked ACDC and, and it was really like, it was a badass video and I thought it was a great... Made you want to buy your own, right? <laughs> yeah, um, a great product. But... If it was like this size, you know, and you could just like, that'd be cool. But you know, this is, this is a, this is an actual vehicle. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's for real. Um, but as more and more of our resources are consumed by the federal government, all of our, um, our talent, and our best and our brightest are going to, um, to build the Bearcat, and um, it's not good. No, it's not. Um, yeah, it's just. I don't know, this is something that lots of places over the country have accepted and uh, Keene is actually, according to the Lenco sales rep, uh, Keene is the first city that has had such a passionate response. Right. So, uh, so um, way to go, Keene residents who came out and spoke out against this. You, you've made history, sort of. Thank you for joining us tonight. We hope you found this show valuable. As always, you can contact Freekeen TV by sending an email to tv at freekeen.com. I'm Allie Haven. And I'm Johnny Ray, wishing you and yours only the best.